Our last topic, area. Area swept out. In the general setting, again, you've got R equals F of theta. You've got two arbitrary angles, say, in the first quadrant. I mean, they don't have to be in the first quadrant. It's just easier to draw. Alpha and beta, you've got some arbitrary polar curve where theta varies between alpha and beta. We're not after we're not after the area under the curve. We're not after that because that's hard to figure out. Well, I mean, we could relate it to rectangular coordinates probably and figure it out if we had to. But what's more interesting and easier ultimately is figuring out the area swept out by the curve. The area of this kind of like a harp or piano shape looking down at the harp or piano. No, never mind. Okay. That shape, that, that's the area that we're after. All right. How do we find it? What do we do with areas under curves? We broke up the interval that X was ranging over it into little pieces. We use approximating rectangles, areas of the approximating rectangles, letting delta X go to zero, equivalent to letting N go to infinity to approximate the area under the graph. But here we have to break the theta interval up into those small pieces and consider small angles instead of small distances along the x-axis. For a small change in the angle, you get a thin, not rectangle, but this kind of shape, which, well, the, the end of it is curved here, so it's not quite a piece of pizza, but it's close to a piece of pizza, a very skinny, skinny piece of pizza. It's close to a skinny piece of pizza. And so maybe I should approximate it as a piece of pizza. Use a little piece of a circle up here instead. And the area of that sector of a circle would then approximate the area that is swept out. Call this little angle, oh, how about delta theta. What is the area swept out, which includes this curved piece here, in terms of delta theta? Delta A, if I pretend it's a sector of a circle, a piece of pizza, a very thin piece of pizza, or a piece of pie, it was pie day celebration yesterday. Actual pie day is next week. Celebrate with some pie, but have thicker pieces. You'll, you'll enjoy it more. It's one half R squared times delta theta. Where does that come from? Now I'm imagining delta theta to be a small angle, but what if it were a big angle? What if it were the entire way around a circle, two pi? This formula would give you one half times r squared times two pi. The twos would cancel, giving you pi r squared, the area of a circle, radius r. If it were half a circle, semicircle, angle pi radians, this would be one half times pi r squared, half the area of a circle. It definitely works giving you areas of circles or semicircles or quarter circles for relatively big angles. Yes, it works for small angles as well, though delta theta does need to be in radians, not degrees. You never use degrees in calculus unless you're told to. Always use radians. We're working toward an integral here. The total area swept out, area swept out, Call it A is the sum of the delta A's, which will be approximately the sum of one half R squared times delta theta, where R is F of theta. Right? R equals F of theta here. 
hey, that's a Riemann sum for the integral of the function one half f of theta squared. Let delta theta go to zero. The area swept out, area swept out. A is gonna be the integral of one half f of theta squared over the interval from alpha to beta. We could use the infinitesimal approach as well. Infinitesimally. I'd write dA equals one half r squared d theta. Change the deltas to d's, change the approximately equal to to an exactly equal to. Say to yourself, the total area is the sum of the infinitesimal areas where you pretend the integral re represents sum, which would be one half the summation of these kinds of things, which would be the summation of these values because R is F of theta. And then you say, hey, wait a minute, if I'm actually gonna get an answer, I need to do a definite integral. So then you go over here and you get your limits of integration. Both approaches get you to the right integral. Yes, they're not rigorous, but uh, we're okay with that. That's the kind of integral you do which for our example is going to be relatively easy, actually, relatively. For our example, A is going to be the integral from alpha to beta. One half F of theta was two plus four cos theta. That gets squared. That's a doable integral. I'll bring the one half out in front. One half integral from alpha to beta Four plus, it'll be when I FOIL, I'll get a uh, 16 cos theta and also a 16 cos squared theta. Use our famous identity that cos squared theta is one half plus one half cos two theta to help simplify. One half times the integral from alpha to beta. Uh, let's see, 16 times a half is eight. Four plus eight is 12. Then we also have uh, plus the 16 cos theta, and we also have 16 times a half is eight plus eight cos two theta. Maybe you wanna bring the one half back through. So we are ultimately integrating from alpha to beta, six plus eight cos theta plus four cos two theta, which can be pretty easily done. Six theta, plus eight sine theta plus um, it'll be two sine two theta. Check that by differentiation. You evaluate it from alpha to beta, whatever that ends up equal. Let's finish class by evaluating that at particular alphas and betas. Let's start off letting theta go from zero to pi over three instead of two pi. What the integral is gonna give you here so I'm letting theta go from zero to pi over three. Pi over three is 60 degrees. I'm not getting the area under the graph. I'm getting the area swept out by the graph. So the entire region from the x-axis to the left of the graph and up to this slanted line right there. That's the area I'm after. What is it equal here? I go from zero to pi over three. I'll just type it in as one half F of theta squared. Ends up equaling five root three plus two pi. What is that approximately? Take the previous output and approximate it. It's about 14.9. That's supposed to be an area. It's the area of this wedge shape region from here up to this line here, about 15 point, uh, 14 point nine. And if you estimate it with a triangle and almost a circle, a quarter circle, you'll get approximately the same thing. Here's the final thing. This is really tricky here. What if you wanted the area, not of the entire Limacon, but just the part that's above the x-axis, but not, not including the loop? You would not want to let theta go to pi. That would be wrong. You let it go to the angle where r is zero, which is two pi over three, 120 degrees. 
that's where the angle gets to zero. And now doing the integral from zero to two pi over three is going to give you the area of about 17.76, not under this curve, because the curve doesn't even pass the vertical line test, but swept out by the curve, which is the same as the area of this entire region that's above the horizontal axis. It's about 17.76. Have a great spring break.